Call from... Jay. Jay. Yeah. Uh, real quick. Um, real. Oh, real you... quick? Yeah. How quick? Well, here's the thing. No, how I... quick? Real quick. How quick? Is this... I wanted to know about the pickup deal. Are you still doing the seven ninety nine pickup deal? All right. Here's what I'm going to tell you reading right now is I will I will I will engage with this bit, but are are you prepared to after doing the bit you know provide me with I'll do the bit, but if we're just going to do the bit and then afterwards you're not going to give me anything of substance, I don't know if I want to do the bit. If you can promise me that after you do this bit, there'll there'll be something, then I'll do it. I'll I'll yes and your bit. So the pizza, it's. I gave you an opportunity. I gave you a chance. I gave you a crossroads. I gave you two options, Jay, and you chose the one that... You chose one. I gave you a chance, Jay. I gave you a shot. You could have done it. You could have done your bit. I gave you an option in which we could... I fucking compromised for you, Jay, and you didn't take it. Why? Why? We both would have won in that scenario, and you still said no. Why, Jay? Why did you do that? So, Tom, you were saying, we were chatting uh, earlier, and you were telling me that you, you mainly do catastrophic injury. You don't do, like... You know, car accidents and fender benders. Just every it, it, catastrophic accidents, you said. Yeah, correct. I'm a catastrophic personal injury lawyer. What that means is pretty straightforward. I, I deal with clients who are severely injured. And just by happenstance, a lot of the times people get severely injured are in incidents such as, you know, explosions or 18 wheeler collisions. The biggest case I'm working on right now is a 600 foot Norwegian oil tanker collided with an 81 foot shrimping boat, killing three of the four people on board. I represent the only survivor and one of the deceased seamen. Um, so, so that's the kind of stuff I do. Um, people do call my office with like fender bender, that kind of stuff. And we do, you know, like we have, like I'll take those cases or, or give them, you know, have other lawyers work on them. but. The cases that I spend my time on are catastrophic personal injury cases. How do you deal with like, you know, are are, do, are people constantly coming to you in like, you know, severe traumatic distress, you know? Yeah, so, so, so it just, it just depends. Um, if it's, a lot of the times it's the family who's making the first inclination or the first inquiry, um, the first round of vetting too because some, somebody's either in the hospital or they're just not in the right frame of mind. And, and to be quite honest, and I don't blame them, when, you, when your life gets turned upside down, the last thing you want to you know, you think about is suing. You're thinking about, you know, when can I get healthy again, right? So it, it's a little bit of, of, of everything and, and the trauma doesn't go away. You know, if you've ever met somebody who's had a life altering injury it's oftentimes not the first five months that are the hardest. It's, you know, from six months to five years later, which is the hardest where they're with where there's no pain and they just have to adapt to their new reality, whatever that is, whether it's not having an arm or not having a leg mm. or, or, or whatever, you know, when, when there's no immediate pain where they don't need immediate care, it's, it's the mental, the pain and suffering, the mental um, fortitude that they need to keep going is is often you know it's most tested at that time mm. is that something you find yourself having to like testify about a lot is like you know share the trauma that people have had as far as like you know uh, yeah. their their mental injuries yeah sure so i'll give you a great example of that um last september so a year ago uh, actually a year ago this week on september 30th or 31st i was part of a trial and 18 wheeler collision we got a very very good verdict for our client a 12 million four hundred fifty thousand dollar verdict for our client she was injured in an 18 wheeler incident and if you looked at her right now and at the trial you could not find anything wrong with her she looks like a normal person 
Mm. She looks totally normal. But what happened was when she was hit, uh, the way she was collided or the way she contorted her body and the way that you know she banged up against the car, she ended up pinching a her trigeminal nerve, which is right in your face, and she developed a condition called trigeminal neuralgia, okay? Trigeminal neuralgia is called the suicide disease because it's so unbearably painful to live with, okay? So your trigeminal area is like this area right here, okay? And if when this nerve pinches, it um, it's just excruciatingly painful. And it can be activated at any time. And it's activated by, by breathing, by talking, by eating, by brushing your teeth, by doing things that you can't avoid. So it's called the suicide disease because so many people who have this disease kill, you know, they, they just cannot handle the, the pain and it never goes away. But from the outside, they look totally fine. You would never know. But, mm. and, and, and on top of that, it's, it's off and on. It's hot and cold. She might go a month or maybe even two months, probably not two months, but she might go a month and not have any, anything happen to her. She might live a totally normal life. And then she might be brushing her teeth one day and boom, she's in just excruciating pain. She can't do anything for two days. She's got to just lay in bed with the lights off or, or stuff like that. So, so, you know, that, that's a, that's purely, you know, how, how do you communicate that? How is that mm -hmm. quantifiable? You know, that's a big part of, of the job, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, so pain and suffering, you know, mental anguish, you know, even, even when she's okay, right? You're always living in fear. You know, it, it's not just, you're not just suffering those times you're in pain. You're, you're living cautiously. You're not, you know, it takes away your hope. It takes away your joy. You know, it's, it, 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 there's, there's just a lot. So, so yeah, I mean, you see a lot and, and, and you know, her story is not unique. You know, it's, it's very, um, it's very, uh, you know, it's a common thing when you're dealing with somebody who's uh, experienced a catastrophic injury. Mm. Right. So you have to, I mean, when you look at a person like that and there's nothing wrong with them, you have to be the one to sort of testify on their behalf of, of everything. No, so, well, well, I mean, we advocate, right? We're their, we're yeah. their lawyer, we're their, yeah, we're their, we're their, we're, we're their advocate. But, you know, for, for medical conditions, right? I'm not a doctor. I didn't know what trigeminal neuralgia was before, you know, dealing with this client um so we have to you know we have to get to the bottom of it we have to have medical experts and and people who can testify about all of that kind of stuff you know like for that particular trial i live in houston texas there's a doctor in houston texas who's a one of coincidentally one of the world's experts in trigeminal neuralgia he's the one who testified at you know at, at that time at that trial so um, and we knew him before. I mean, obviously, we took a deposition of him and all that stuff. So, um, you know, we, uh, you know, we just do the best we can. We just, we add, we, we acquire the knowledge, right? We're not the experts. And then it's our job to make the argument. You know, we package it all together. Man, that is terrifying. You know, it's so crazy because I, I was going to say I talk all Hello? the time, but the dynamic shifts so much when I'm with someone who actually knows things about things as opposed to me not knowing anything about anything. Yeah. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Luke. How's life going, Luke? Uh, it's good. It's good. Have you ever been in trouble, Luke? Uh, I've been in trouble a few times, yeah. When's the last time you got in trouble? Uh, last time I was in trouble was like a year ago. What happened, Luke? And then yesterday. Oh. <laughs> um, so a year ago. I, uh, I, uh, I committed arson. <laughs> Why did you commit arson a year ago, Luke? 
I extended <laughs> arson. Like, I don't know. It was complete insurance fraud. I'm going to be honest with you. Did it work? It, it, it actually <laughs> did work. I was compensated $300,000. Had, had, what did you do with that three hundred thousand dollars that you were compensated after committing insurance fraud? I invested it into stocks. Okay, what'd you do yesterday? Yesterday, I, uh, I, I, so I try to live no not November every day of my life, and I kind of, uh, I kind of gave in. Okay. You know what I mean? How did that get you in trouble? Were you under a bridge? It got me, no, it got me in trouble with the Lord. I feel like I have sinned. I feel horrible, man. Yo, Tom. I don't yeah. understand what's so funny, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Luke. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull together your, 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 your incidents seem very, very real, and um, okay. you know, of course, I'm not your lawyer. I don't know what state you're in, and I can't give you legal advice. And what you just said was to approximately, I don't know, give or take 500 people. But if I was your lawyer, I'd probably tell you not to admit to getting uh, committing arson and committing insurance fraud uh, to the public. You know, that's well, especially. Yeah. So but, I actually but, have a but, question. Okay. Okay, so is this illegal? Like, how illegal is this? Like, how much trouble could I get in for this, okay? So per se, I had $10 million, okay? Okay. And I paid an appraiser $15,000. Okay. To appraise a painting for $3 million. Okay. And I donated that painting for $3 million. And I have a $3 million tax break for a painting that was worth like 20 bucks. Um, well, you could get into a lot of trouble if you got that far. Yeah, what, if, what if nobody found out? Well, if nobody found out, then you wouldn't get into any trouble. Okay, so... I mean, that's like anything, you know? If, I, if somebody did find out, how many years of jail am I looking at? Probably probably just depends on where you did it. Did you cross state lines? Is it a federal offense? Who's your prosecutor? Um, it's going to be... I mean, it could be a, a wide, wide... I mean, if you're committing tax fraud, uh, that which you would be by not... Um, by not paying your taxes to the federal government, you would go to the federal... Uh, it'd be a federal crime which is a lot more severe there's no parole in federal court for federal crimes um, okay. I mean you. I don't know exactly how many years you would get probably the nature of your um, yeah but y y I mean you would definitely go to jail okay so I also have another question for you guys okay um do you ever just like set up a lawn chair in the shower and sit in the shower? No, my no. shower is not even big no. enough for a lawn chair. No. Alex, hey, I want to. I want to. I just, just as a general, just as a human, as as a wannabe investor, tell me where you invested your three hundred thousand dollars from your from your alleged, uh, which we can't confirm. Mm -hmm for legal reasons, because I don't want to get in trouble, from your alleged insurance fraud, where did you invest your $300,000? Um, I am also curious um, about this. Well, I invested some of it into Tesla and Dow Jones. Uh, S&P 500 was another one I was looking into. So well you're, an, you're an index like, fund guy. So, but it honestly, it's honestly kind of, it's honestly kind of sucks because the stock prices have been down lately. But, but you said you invested a year ago. Where are you when you invested? I mean, are you up? Are you up? I'm, uh, I'm, has I'm your down. money been in the market for I'm 12 down. months? For I am down recently. 
Right, recently, but I'm talking about overall. I mean, do you have a long-term stock portfolio or, I mean, what, what's your end game? You know, would you like to retire somewhere someday? Would you? Well, the main, the main goal is to, you know, just, I don't know, it's something I've always been interested in since I was a young and I remember being four years old reading about Tesla on the internet and um, I figured it was a great idea to, you know, invest. So Tesla went public in like 2010. So if you're three or Do four you know years that? old, are you, you like 14? You know that. Can you prove it? No, I'm using circumstantial evidence. Or not even circumstantial evidence. Direct evidence. I'm a lawyer, man. Come on, you know I got to ask these questions. Luke, I have a question. Yeah, what's that question, man? What is your relationship like with God? Man, every single day I wake up and I pray to the Lord Jesus Christ that he forgives me for all my sins because the Lord knows I'm a sinner. What, what do you think pissed God off more between the arson and the master? Well, I don't think he knows what arson is. You don't think God God invented arson? Have you not heard the story of the burning bush? I have. I faintly remember it though. I was I was around four years old, three maybe. Just around the time when you started reading about Tesla. Yeah. Yes. 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 Well, Luke, uh, you know, good luck. Why do you say that? You know, because I... You worried about me? I'm worried about those around you. I hope they're fine. I hope they're fine too, Luke. They should be good. Well, uh, look, stay safe and, um. You too, bro. You know, don't piss off God again. I'll try not to, man. I'm gonna live for you, Gecko. <laughs> By the way, I like your tie. Thank you. I love and, you, attorney, Luke. I'm not gonna lie. You do need a haircut. Your sides are looking a little long. Oh, wow. Thank you. I appreciate it. But thank you guys for all the advice. Um, honestly, what I would do is I would get a beanie and I would pull it down over your eyebrows. <laughs> um, get a baggy pair of pants and a flannel and only button the top button. <clears throat> I think it would complete the look. <laughs> and as for you, Gecko, you look amazing today, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Alright, take care. Alright, you, you guys have a great day, man. Alright, peace. Do you think water's wet? Do I think water is wet? Yes. But why? Well, I guess... Okay, so if, some, if something ha gets water on it, then it becomes wet. Correct. So I, I agree am with Lyle. That statement. And if I get Lyle on something, is that thing... Lyled? But then would I be Lyled if I'm made of Lyle? No, I don't think so, because you don't, like, you know, you're solid, right? Yeah. A water, being wet is a temporary state. My argument would be that anything that is what we, conce what we conceive of as wet permanently would be a liquid, right? Liquids can't be wet. 
No. Wet is a temporary condition when something that is solid or semi-solid becomes drenched in liquid, presumably water. Yes. So my argument would be water is not wet, but if you pour water on, you know, Lyle, then Lyle would be wet. But Lyle, but water itself is not wet. Wait, Tom. If yeah. you pour water on water, does it become wet? No, it doesn't, because you, you would. It, it's a liquid, so it just remains in its permanent state of being a liquid. It does not get anything more wet. What if you freeze it and it becomes ice, and you dip the ice in water? Well, while the ice is solid, it can be wet, but while but. But then as it transitions into liquid, it doesn't become wet, it just becomes liquid. Call from Alex. To accept Alex. How you doing? You know I'm doing Yo, what's all right, up, Alex. Alex. So I um got into uh, some legal trouble with uh, my girlfriend one night and uh, it ended up costing me $375 so I uh, actually went down to a boat launch and it was probably just after dusk and uh, I was sitting down with her you know doing what you do and then suddenly this fog light or spotlight comes on my truck and suddenly someone's banging on my window saying, get out, get out. And so I thought it was some like homeless people underneath the bridge. And suddenly he just keeps going. So they, all right, get under the blanket in the back and hide. I'll go out and deal with it. Well, I get out and then he's like, turn around. So apparently, I still to this day do not know, I think he was a game warden, but I'm really not sure. But um, I basically got a 375 ticket for getting a blowjob under a bridge. And I went to contest it in court. And the judge only reduced it by half, even though I had a clean record. And I was very confused. What what state are you in, Alex? Washington. Okay. Well, Alex, first of all, you know, nice. uh, I, I'm not a Washington attorney. This is not legal advice. And your matter's already over, so it shouldn't matter. Um, but a lot of states do have indecent exposure or sex act in public violations, such as that. And... You know, it, it's very possible or probable that that ticket the game warden or officer wrote you is within their, um, you know, is, is within their boundaries or within their limits, you know. And, and I'm sorry that that happened. And the judge actually is pretty cool cutting the fee in half, I think. So what? So, I mean, you know, what was it? 375 cut, cut by two? So that's, I don't know, I'm pretty bad at math. That's 180 bucks, give or take, 187 bucks. Um, Around there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm well, sorry I mean, that happened, like, but... He didn't see nothing. That's the thing. It's like, he didn't see anything. So it's like, I just got a ticket for, I guess, being down there beyond dusk, but... Well, you, you can take, you know, you, you could take some circumstantial evidence, you know, I'm sure if you were in a closed car, your windows were all foggy, you guys were probably in the back seat, um, you know, how long it took for you to get out of the car, um, you know, and to be quite honest, you even admitted that you were getting a blowjob, you know, here. So, you know, he, he might have seen something or, or, you know, heard something that inferred or gave him you know, enough evidence to, to write you that ticket. And it sounds like when you went to court, you, you pled guilty if that's, if your ticket got reduced, so you didn't fight it, 
which you you had the right to, but oh, I did. Um, I did find it. Oh, you did find it. So you went to trial. Yeah, yeah I did. I um, I went down there because he wrote me a ticket for like being down there past dusk, and so when you pull into the boat launch. And I went back the next day, and all the signs are covered completely with sticker bushes. So you couldn't see them anyway. So you couldn't read the signs that said you couldn't be there. I mean, I've lived there so long, I know that you can't be there. But still, in the eyes right, of the law, but... technically, you can't see the sign. So I showed the pictures to the judge. She's like, all right, reduced by half. I was like, okay, well, whatever. I have a clean record, but that's fine. So I went back the next day after the trial, and all the sticker bushes were gone. So having a sign is not outcome determinative, right? So, I mean, like, you know, I I could go out into, you know, I don't know, like just a random street. I could get in my car and go into park in a random street or a random parking lot. And, you know, there's, there doesn't need to be a sign that says, you know, hey, by the way, no blow jobs in this parking lot past 9 p.m. or at all, right? So, so I, I would just, and I'm just guessing, right? Um, the the sign is not outcome determinative of what was happening. It was more just that what like you for for all you know, you you could have been in your own driveway doing that and still gotten that same ticket just because you were in public in the public view and there's that you know it's just a indecent indecency argument i gotcha so my next question is what is your if let's say you get a ticket of any sort what is the best things to say to the judge when you go to fight it well, it, it just depends, right, on how much evidence they have. Let me let, let's back up a little bit. The best the best thing you can do is when you are getting a ticket, the the second that you are getting pulled over for anything, you need to shut the fuck up. It is that is rule number one. The officer. It comes to your window. They say, pull out your ID. You pull out your ID because you have to identify yourself. Uh, again, I'm a Texas lawyer. I assume that's true for every state. You know, if you don't identify yourself, you're probably going to get in trouble. I feel safe saying that that's pretty unanimous. Um, then they're going to ask you a bunch of questions. They're going to try to get under your skin. You're going to say, officer, I'm not talking about my day. Officer, you know, or, or hey, 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 Tom, do you know why I pulled you over? No, officer, I don't know why you pulled me over, nor am I going to guess. I'm not going to give you any evidence. I'm not going to give you anything. I want you to tell me everything. I'm not going to be talking about my day. I'm not going to tell you who I'm with. Respectfully, of course, you don't need to be a dick to them. But, you know, you just say, officer, respectfully, uh, just just tell me what you need from me. And if I'm free to go, great. If not, so that that's how you can set yourself up best, because a lot of times police officers will pull you over for something very minor and then end up walking away with something much worse because you just were running your damn mouth, you know? Uh, and, and police officers, quite frankly, deal with a lot of people. And if you're respectful and you're quiet, they'll forget you by the time the court date comes. You know, the court date's not going to be for months. So if you're respectful and quiet, you don't, but they, but they go out of their way to remember the people who caused them trouble, right? And they'll make sure they show up to court for them. So, so that, that's how you set the stage correctly. And then when you go in front of the judge, you know, it's just going to depend, you know, how they might have crystal clear evidence that you're guilty. They might not, but it's just being respectful and doing all that stuff. And if you can, I always re- recommend hiring a lawyer. I mean, lawyers are there to navigate all, all of that, you know, that, that, that the legal process. Yeah, so that's kind of my tips. There's no cure-all, right? There's no magic way to, to get out of every ticket. If there was, I would, I would let you know. But, you know, it's just about setting yourself out, you know, setting yourself up for the most probable chance of success. It's very good advice. Yeah. So what are you going to do now? What am I going to do now? 
Um, I guess not get blowjobs underneath the bridge anymore. That's the first thing. But, uh... There's lots of other places you can get blowjobs, Alex. Well, Where you won't get a ticket. Where you won't get a ticket. Where you can oh. get one safely. Safely. Yeah, I know, I know a lot of spots around here. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, we're not worried about you at all, Alex. Just, just, just for the for the listeners at home who might be concerned that under a bridge is the only place where you can get a blowjob. There are other there are other avenues. There are other places. This is why we do this. This is why we have conversations like this to let important information such as that into the open. Yes, people need it's cheaper to learn from others' mistakes. Well, thank you very much for, for calling in, Alex, and, uh, you know, sharing your escapades. And, and, you know, look, stay safe out there, right? And, you know, write down a list of five other places so that you have it on hand when you need a Ten place four. to go to get a blowjob that's not a bridge. 10-4. Thank you, sir. Take care, Alex. Hey, right, y'all. Good night. Can... fire be on fire? But what is... But but you wouldn't... But fire is not a property, right? I mean, something can be wet. I guess something can be on fire, right? Something can be burning. Um... Can fire burn? Be can fire be burning? Yeah, of course. Well, but isn't that but but what is it burning? That's the thing. Is fire is a temporary condition. Water can stay water forever with no but fire needs energy to consume. Right? It's getting that energy from somewhere, whether that's wood or propane or whatever. Right. Fire is not the natural state. Water is a natural state as a liquid. And then... Can water burn? I mean, in theory, right? Water boils and it evaporates. Oh, is lava wet? What about an... In what about... That's kind of an in-between. Is lava wet? I thought lava was like... Melted... F what the hell is lava? But lava's a liquid. Right? I mean, just floating around in a volcano, but it's wet. But is it wet? But it's not... It wouldn't be wet under that definition, because it's a liquid. But... Could lava get... If I poured lava on the table... Is the table wet? But also, it's going to catch on fire because the lava's the lava's going to burn it. I do like that quote. Hello? 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 Is this Lyle? Yeah. Gek, fucking A. I'm watching the stream right now and it's not lined up with what's happening on my phone, so this is very interesting. Wow. I need to leave this area of the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave your computer. I don't know how to. I don't know how want, to pause it. I want it and you to leave your shit. computer, and I want you to go somewhere far away, and I want you to pretend like you're on a private phone conversation with a gecko and an attorney, who does I not give legal advice and is not your attorney. Well, and, so uh, usually, the gecko is not a well, real therapist. This is this is surreal. Let me ask you something, Scott. Yeah. You ever been in trouble? Oh God, my whole life has been nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. When I was, I don't know, sixteen, pulled over, driving a car with no license. I, mean, I hadn't even taken the test at that point. I was just fucking this girl who had a car, and that just led to a slew of issues for years to come. But that's okay, you know. The government exists. 
for some reason, do I agree or do we agree why it exists and what they do to us for the things that we do on the road or at home and shit like that? Who cares? It's, it's beyond us. The law is, the law exists and I but try to live my life as if it's just not there. How about you? So you do, but, but then you do care, right? I mean, you can't say that. Oh. Because well, if you I, live your I life like laws difference. don't exist, they, you, you, you get consequences like getting pulled over when you don't have a license and it, and the re- repercussions. Oh, of course. All of those repercussions I've been dealing with for years. Oh yeah. I mean, so I know what's your, exist. what's your, what's your theoretical stance on governance? You know, what is, government. what is the perfect form of government? Well, I mean, I think we can all agree, no matter who we are, that there has to be some general senses of how to act amongst each other. But it is not in my nature to really in, invoke my life onto anybody else's. Like, I, I don't think, I think government should be minimalistic. And I think democracy has taken a slight dive in the last hundred years and I just, I just want everyone to be happy no matter what they're doing I want I want nobody to impede on their happiness and I want us all to just live cohesively but what Do happens what when, makes go ahead but what happens when there are bad actors you know you can't you can't just like, that sounds like a perfect world no, 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 no. The world's not perfect. Somebody's going to intrude on somebody's means. rights. How, how do you, you, you need somebody to step in and be the enforcer of laws? Well, and I know this is probably going to catch some flack, but I chair, I, you know, I'm, I'm 27. I'll be 28 in January. I'm a younger dude. But, and I was not around for the times when pretty much everyone who was a man carried a gun and lawmen were far and few in between. And if you had an issue with somebody that really demanded an an action, you would take care of it yourself. I feel like society as a whole has diverted towards a world where we rely too much or too heavily on somebody who is too far away to take action for us. What does that mean, rely on yourself? I mean, couldn't you use that as an excuse for everything? Don't you need a neutral arbitrator? I've never seen an incident where both part, where one party says they were completely at fault. You know, what happens if two people get into a fight? One person well, kills that's... the other. And it was really the, you know, it was really the guy who, who shot his fault, you know, but, but then he's just going to say, yeah. I was just defending myself or whatever. You just, you're leading, there, there needs to be a, a big brother, big sister in some capacity, surely. I mean, if you, re- if you rely on everybody's word and well, goodness. I agree then. with you. I agree with you. You know, and that's why I say I, I relish the days that are long past where, you know, the law exists, but it didn't impede on your daily life as heavily as it does today. Obviously, if you kill somebody out of just, then you should be taken to justice, and justice should be sure, should be served. What, but what laws I don't do you agree. Feel like impede that, upon your life. Go ahead. What what law? What if you could get rid of any laws? What laws would you get rid of? Oh man, uh, pretty much every traffic law. Being able to distill your own whiskey. I'm, I'm literally looking at barrels of whiskey. I I'm sorry, myself. you said you would get rid of all traffic laws. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so, so you want to I be mean, able to drink? I think, and then drink. I think speeding, I think speeding is, is stupid. And you should be able to go as fast as you fucking want. We're all adults here. If you go too fast <laughs> and you kill yourself, natural selection is going to go ahead and take well, course and you're going to die. What happens if you kill somebody else? Uh, honestly? Again, natural selection will take hold, and either you're going to die, or you're going to kill somebody. That's not how natural selection works. For everybody. You could be, I could be a PhD, smartest guy in the world, driving safely sure. on a freeway, and some <laughs> yeah. dude bag goes 120 miles per hour, swerves, flies over the median, and kills me. That's not natural selection. 
That's, you know, I've been I've been driving 80 miles an hour in the fast lane after I just sold a gram of DMT to some guys. Happy as can be because I had $200 in my wallet, smoking a joint with a girl next to me, and then here comes some headlights toward me in my lane that I had to casually swerve to miss. And you know what? The 30 plus cops on the other side of the highway chasing the guy who was on my side of the highway, they weren't going to do dick for me if he hit me. You know what I mean? Like I took care of that situation the same way anyone else should. And uh, if you, if you were too you lazy to save your situation. own life, well, then I'm sorry. But wouldn't you agree that the more instances there were, the more statistically probable? Like, like if you relate that, if you replayed that same situation a hundred times, mm-hmm. you might have gotten to an accident five percent of oh, the God. time, maybe ten percent no. of the time. What? I, I, I think I probably would have gone through an accident ninety percent of the time. Scott, so that's what great. Is your... so... Scott, what's your opinion Trust on me. stop signs? Stop sign? Uh, I think yield signs are more effective. I've, I've lived in, I live in Texas, and there are neighborhoods around here where you come to a four-way stop, and it's a yield instead of a stop. So if you don't see anybody, then you can, you're can you free to go ahead and cruise on through that four-way. But if do you, you do see somebody, then you do lanes? what is necessary. You stop, and you let the person left you go first. Would you, would you agree that not all people have the same driving abilities? Oh God, yes, and that's and, and, and that's wouldn't why, you agree? Yes. Wouldn't you agree that you know they're they're, they're that at some level, mm-hmm. everybody deserves the ability to drive, to transport themselves, to conduct their daily freedoms. Okay, well, yes and no, and the no is probably the hardest part because I feel like that freedom kind of gets muted at a certain age would you agree i feel like some people at a certain age can drive but where i'm from uh i don't think you have to take your driving test for every i don't think you have to take your driving test ever again once you take it you just you're good and you just get it renewed and then that's it but there are some older people out there who want to rely on themselves to do the things they need to do in life, but they might not be the best drivers and they might be a little stubborn about it. And that is rough, you know? And I think we've all seen the episode of uh, Futurama where, where they put all the old people on a planet because at a certain point, you just get to be a burden. And I want to go 80 miles an hour on the highway and I don't want to be impeded right. by the people going 65 in the fast lane. That just sucks. But you're, but, but you're kind of, your argument doesn't really make sense. I, you know, somebody with your stance on no driving laws should say, yeah, I, I, everybody should be able to drive, right? I mean, how do you make well, that determination when you take away I guess I, I guess I spoke too, too audaciously when I said no driving laws. I mean, I feel like there's a, there's a okay, the, okay when I, if, I, if there were no driving laws, nobody would go drive. Because the only thing that you and I rely on every day when we go out and drive is the fact that those yellow fucking stripes in the road are the only thing keeping us alive. I knew it. Because if I give, drift off into those stripes, lanes? I'm going to kill you, and that's that. So there's a, there's a certain moral, ethical code on the road amongst all of us that this is how we drive. And if somebody's going faster, you get out of the way. Or if there's an emergency vehicle coming, you pull over. You know, just these things that keep society flowing. But I don't right, believe but here, but that here, here, all these towns, hold on, I'll, I'm, so, I'm so apologetic is... about this, but all of these towns around America that just that just butcher people for going a little too fast and just raking all this money unethically, I think it's wrong. But, but wouldn't you agree that if millions of people are on the road a day, you need some form of cohesive structure because if you leave everybody yeah. just to just to go autobahn style in autobahn their, but but autobahn. if you go look at the statistics for the autobahn i mean they're 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 very opaque i mean no right, nobody but they're killing are, themselves yeah, in autobahn they're, every day. They're, they're, right i get it right there but but there are lanes you know there's, yeah. there's etiquette there's I don't want it to be road warrior. I just want no speeding tickets, pretty much. Listen, I feel like this is taking away from the whole point of why I called today. Like, I feel like this is a relished moment that I need to take in. And you guys are so important. Go ahead. 
What happened? Did I want to hear you say that tra- that is, that you need traffic lanes. laws exist for a reason. Can you say that lanes? That's important to have lanes. Oh, absolutely. If we didn't have lanes, we'd be all over the place. Okay. Listen, you're getting too caught up on the fact that I don't want traffic laws. I just don't want uh, that's, you know what? cops to be I able to sit on the side of the road and, and find your ass for, for going a little too fast. What state do you live in? So that I know I that when Texas. I go there, I'll just walk. I live in Texas, where we can go 80 miles an hour on some roads. And if no one's around, you can just go 90. And it's totally okay, because you're not hurting anybody. And you don't want to hurt anybody. You just want to get through this massive state that's three times the size of yours a little bit faster. When I go to Colorado to buy weed where it's legal to bring home here where it's not, I have to obey the the traffic laws coming back because I don't want to get pulled over again. And I don't want to have to pay New Mexico a bunch of fucking money just for going a little too fast. Where just 10 miles up the road, it was 80 miles an hour and it would have been legal. Because it's legal to buy weed in Colorado. It's not legal to take that weed into Texas. Nope, not at all. And you're upset that you can't break the law. Um, I feel like prohibition, you know, needs to end, and that's okay. I'm not, again, I don't look at the law as anything that really affects my daily life. I just kind of live my life you the best I can. You opened this call by I saying that I treat people the best op- I can. No, 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 no. You opened the call by saying that on a daily basis, the laws affect your life. Uh, you asked me if I'd ever been in trouble. I said that I'd, I mean, I'd, trouble follows me everywhere, man. I just, whatever, you deal with it like you deal with anything. You, you learn from it, and then you try to be wiser and move forward and not do that again. But that's okay, you know, if you, if you, if none of us had ever been in trouble, I feel like none of us ever really would have learned anything substantial. You know? What What a beautiful lesson for... Oh, come on. I mean, what 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 troubles have you gone in where you were just like, man, that was a lot of work for, for not a lot of reward and a lot of hassle. I should probably just not do that again. I mean, I feel like we all do that every day. Uh, what would you say your name was? My name is Adam. First man. You, Scott. Yep. Well, Adam. Thank you for for calling in. This was dang. this was informative. What? No. What do, you, what do you mean, dang? We got we. This was a. We did a. We got oh, fi- We got a good fifteen minutes. Wow. Adam. That just. I mean, you know the old saying: "Time flies when you're having fun." I, I love you, Scott. I'll talk to you soon. Oh man, I love the hell out of you, and I love everyone who's listening. And again, I'm not a bad person. I just want to be able to go faster. So you have a really great night. You too. Oh wait, okay. before you go, before you go, hey, can I ask you something? Lyle, how how are you doing today? You know I'm doing alright. That's good. I'm I'm glad to hear that. You answer it the same way every time. And I get the whole shield this time, but that's okay. So you have a good night, man. Thank you. You too. Later. Love you. Bye. <clears throat> that was interesting. So Tom, what do you think? Should we should it be legal to kill people with your car? No. Call from Maddie. To accept, press 1. Maddie. Maddie. Oh my god, hello? Hello, Maddie. How are you? Hi. I'm good. I'm really happy that you answered. I'm, I'm happy that, I, that you called. Thank you. Oh my god. Um... I see people saying my name in the chat. I did actually have um, a legal problem, I guess. And I don't want to go with, like, I don't want to try to make the conversation super deep. Um, but I was just wondering, because I, I used to work for this um, restaurant or whatever, like a local one. And, oh, wait, am I allowed to cut? Like, is that okay? Yeah, you can cuss. Okay. Well, they were, like, really rude to me. Like, they were just assholes. Like I do age check. I'm 18. Um, but 
I was just wondering, is, can I actually get into legal trouble for hacking their Instagram account and turning it into a um, Megan Thee Stallion fan account? Yes. Hack hacking whose Instagram account? Your The company's or your co-worker's? Yeah, the restaurant. You, you, listen, I don't know what state you're in and this isn't legal advice. I have to tell you that every time. Everybody that every time. You can get in trouble yeah. for hacking anybody's Instagram account that's not your own. And yes. Hmm. Even if it's just like, like, how could they catch me though? Like, is it really that big of a deal? I mean, everybody says, "How can they catch me until they get caught?" I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody from the restaurant's watching a, a stream involving a therapy gecko, and they recognize mm -hmm. your voice. And then when the incident happens, they they know who it was. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. That's but I think, like, they deserve it, morally. Morally also, you know, is Megan not... Stallion already has an Instagram. But that's a great... Lyle, this is a great... This is a great question that you might need to chime in on. Moral does not always mean legal. There, yeah. are, there are some things that are legal, but they might very well be immoral. And there are a lot of yeah. historical examples of that. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is right now, you know, it is legal or illegal, I should say, for you to pursue your um, your desire to change, hack into an Instagram account that does not belong to you, change. Yeah. Well, I want to really call it hacking. Like, it's not really hacking. It's just you, um, like, you put, if they don't have two-factor authentic authentication or whatever, you can just, like, put in a different email. And then change the password is what some person told me. I asked somebody to help me with it. Why does it matter if it's not the hacking? You're still you're achieving well, the same ends. Yeah. Well, I guess. Yeah. Why? Why are you mad at these people again? Well, I just like I had like I don't know. I just really. Didn't, I don't know, I don't want to get too deep into it, but uh, there was like definitely like, they were just assholes, like, um, I don't know, there's so much there's months, but there was like inappropriate touching from the boss who was like 50, and I just like, just have always just like hated them, and they, yeah, okay, they were so, Yeah. So, okay, yeah. Um, if that's true. Mm. I think you need to go talk to a local employment lawyer, right? Yeah. So of course bosses cannot take advantage of their employees or touch them inappropriately. That's completely um, outrageous and creates a <laughs> bad work environment. And I'm not, I, I'm just switching gears just for a little side note. Um, yeah. It is possible for there to be bad work environments that aren't illegal per se. like. Just it's part of life. Mm -hmm. I deal with jerks every day, you know, you know, I, mm -hmm. you know, that's different. But if you are legitimately sexually harassed, that is beyond just being a bad workplace. That is a yeah. unsafe, un, you know, illegal yeah. manner. And, you know, if, if you're, you're, trust me, your revenge would be much better suited in, mm -hmm. in the form of a legal action. And the people mm -hmm. who handle those type of issues are employment lawyers. So I would go on to Google. Yeah. I would just Google employment lawyer. Google will match you to wherever, you know, state or city you're in and just go mm -hmm. talk to them. Usually it's free consultation and they'll tell you whether or not it's legit. And hopefully whoever did that to you is held accountable. The restaurant's held accountable for having a um, uh, uh, environment where that's allowed or tolerated mm -hmm. but i but but i would advise strongly against the original game plan of hacking their accounts that is yeah. the wrong way to go about things yeah i agree i'm let me write that down employee lawyer employment lawyer yes employment lawyer okay also you know look it's more 
effective too because what the heck they're just gonna change back their instagram you know you're not gonna yeah. you know achieve any real change or get back in them in any sort of meaningful way that doesn't also bite back at you you know yeah that's true i was just like annoyed and i feel like i could actually do anything about it i just wanted to i guess mess with them so yeah <laughs> yeah Well, Maddie, uh, look, I hope that you, I hope that you're able to solve this in a, um, you know, through the system in a meaningful way. Yeah. As opposed to thank creating you. another Megan The Stallion Instagram account. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Absolutely. You take care, Maddie. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. You too. Where do you think we go when we die, Tom? I don't know. All I know is I want to be shot off in space. Hell yes. Hopefully Elon Musk will have some sort of product by that time. Get some space attorneys. Yeah. Call from Riley. To accept, press 1. Riley. 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 Hello? Riley, are you watching the stream right now? Yeah. Do we, can you do me a favor? Wait, what? Can you, can you turn the stream off? Yeah, it is off. Turn the what are you volume doing? What are you doing? What are you doing right now? Sitting here drinking beer. Have you ever lied, Riley? Yeah, definitely. About what? That's where it gets complicated. Why is it complicated? Well, um, let's just say most of my entire life has been a lie. How has most of your entire life been a lie? All right. Well, um, kind of one of, I'm kind of trans to begin with. Okay. But I have to hide it so I can do my job. Really? Yep. I've had to for a long time and I've known for a long time. It's What's actually why I called you because my last therapist actually ended up, uh, taking our own life, if you know what I mean. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, I do have to tell you I am not a real therapist or in any way, shape, or form even remotely qualified to be a therapist or even give advice or do anything of any kind in, in any of, of that sense. Yeah. However, I know that. I just want to have a conversation with somebody I can actually talk to about it. Well, what's your job? Well, I'm a musician for a living. Why, 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 why can't you be openly trans as a musician? Because in the South, things are not still that great. Like in the like specifically in the music scene that you're in. Pretty much, yeah. The areas like unless you're like a lot of the money, if you're not like you know making a bunch of money off your own music, is going through the, the cover circuit. You know, where you go and you play at bars and restaurants and stuff like that. And right. in certain areas in the country still, there's there's still a lot of people that, you know, I've heard it before where, you know, we love your music, but sound great, but people just wouldn't be comfortable with someone like you here. You go back three months later, not looking that way anymore, and then boom, you get the job. Where, where in Texas are you? Well, not in Texas, but um, a little sorry, more towards the east. Did you ever say where you were? No, I'm not really gonna give my like exact state. Sure, you don't have to. Um, is there a reason why you don't want to move and go somewhere else? Um, money. I've I've ended up homeless before. I've lived out of my car. It's some of the worst experiences ever. Like to to wake up freaking you know in a 95 degree car, 
And do you live do you live with your parents now? No, I live on my own. I'm able to make my own. I was make I was able to make a pretty good living before all the craziness of the world. You know what I mean? But so right, that's what where I'm it's like, like, could you not yeah. could you not find a place in? I mean, you don't it. Could you not find a place like? I mean, like you don't have to move to like New York City to find to find a place where like you could feel comfortable being openly trans. But like, could you find? a place that is less hostile to trans people that you could afford to live in that is similarly priced as where you currently live? Um, where it's, like, still somewhere... Well, that's another thing is, like, in this industry, it's all networking. So if sure, you don't know sure. anybody and you go somewhere completely new, you have to start from the ground up again. You're throwing years of, you know, networking out the window. So, so I, you I mainly make money so from... I moved, like, I moved sorry, like 600 miles saying? away. Sorry, my, Do you mainly make your money from from bar and restaurants? Most of it, yeah. The the, the primary bulk. Are you, do you do any independent music, or are you mainly just a, a cover cover music? No, I do independent music too. Um, which genre do you play? Um, it's kind of like psychedelic blues rock with jazz influence. I'm not familiar with like the various music scenes or anything but i mean i i i feel like you could find uh, um i mean are you adverse to like it's so it's so fucking different with the fucking pandemic but like are you adverse to trying to find a city that has like a, a solid scene for your genre that is you know more welcoming of of you know and and progressive area oh absolutely but <clears throat> that's where like I've met a few people that, you know, are in some pretty, you know, big internationally touring bands and they always tell me like move to New York and I'm like, I would love that because Los Angeles is where more of the, you know, less people go there to play. They go there and do more of the technical side of things like movies and production and stuff like that. New York's where a lot of musicians will go and they're like, they would love you there. You doesn't matter who you are there as long as you just play good music. But that's where it's like, how do you go about, Especially when you're, you know, I'm not saying I make a bunch of money. I was able to support myself before all this stuff was going down. But now it's like, okay, barely even scraping by. So it's like, how do you just, you know, run away from all that when you barely have enough to even go off of? But at the same time, it's like, that's just, long story short, I've, I've the whole in the closet, out of the closet thing, I've, I've done that like five times. <laughs> Is I mean how how is it something that you're like is is this like a thing that's like actively taking a toll on you constantly having to like hide who you are and like in the closet Very. out of the closet? Very. It's in, it's brought on a serious drinking problem. <laughs> how old are you? Can I ask you how old are you? Uh, twenty seven. Twenty seven. I I I'm I'm trying to I want I want to break down why you can't move. All right. Well, I mean that's there's a lot of factors to that cuz a where do you go if you have no one that you're you know you know there. If you have no connections there, then first off you just got to have the money saved up to go ahead and get a a place. You Who know? was that touring band that you talked to? Um, some of them would be like Air, Candlebox. Um, then there was a, who was it? The producer for Steve Miller. <laughs> he was a he was a cool guy. Can I ask, like, have you to me? See, to me, like, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy to talk this stuff through with you. But to me, this is something where, like, I would. I'd fucking literally go on like Twitter or Reddit or I would find transgender musicians in New York who are like not that big and I would like reach out to them on Instagram or or Twitter and just be like how do you how are you doing this right now like do you have any advice like I like I this is something that I feel like you could find people to talk it through with that would have like practical advice that I True. would not. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess 
I just wanted to get someone else's opinion on is, is it better to, I guess my philosophy has always been this. Is it better to do what you have to do to survive and it be something that you enjoy? Or would you rather be yourself? And so basically, would you rather enjoy what you do out in the world or be happy with your own internal world? It's kind of like a decision I've had to make all these years. And I always have chosen that I don't have to look in a mirror every day. That's a decision that you have to make. But going out and doing something and making money to survive is a, it's a definite. So I'd rather go out, do something that I love, than go and do something that I despise doing. But at the same, it's it's really complicated. But why why are you why why are, but why is that your only two options? Why can't you? Why isn't there a? Do you, are you completely hopeless? to find a situation in which you can be out and also playing music? Slightly, mainly just because of a lot of the experiences I've had in the past that have made it to where it's like I kind of just fear it now. It's it's complicated. It's tough, and it's not something that, you, you know, it's not... Like, I can understand any of it either, and I never wish this on my, my worst enemy. But at the same time, it's like, I'd rather I'd rather do what I love, and that's play music. But at the same time, yes, if I could have both, I definitely would. And that's kind of the goal. I'm losing my house in a few weeks um, due to the whole pandemic. And I'm getting a, a cheap room at a friend's house out here for about six months. And that's, my whole plan is to save up as much as I can. And that way, I can kind of sit there and go, "All right, what's next?" I think it's a, I think that's a good plan to try to save up some money, um, to move. I mean, you're you're getting kind of double fucked because you know live music is you know uh, uh, on a downward. Tr- How hard are you going at like? Can I can I call you, dude? Are you, do you yeah, go by I don't him? Care. I never do. How I, I, that. I just want to make sure. Get, um, how hard are you going at like? So well, okay, well, first of all, someone in the chat was saying was sort of echoing what I was saying, which is like you know, there's probably subreddit, there's probably subreddits of like, you know, there there are like definitely people on the same journey as you, possibly even you know close fit, proximity closer to you than than you would think. Uh, I, w- I would go on Reddit and I would go on Twitter and I would like find other trans artists and like ask them for their advice. Even if they're like, even if they're similarly hopeless to you, you might, and they don't have like a solution for you. You might feel like some solidarity there or you might make you feel less alone about it if you feel alone about it. True. You know, um, what else? I guess my one of my other plans is to to try and maybe start streaming while doing like being more of myself, you know, and Hell trying to yeah. my, See, my talent fucking, out there like that. This is, this is fucking, uh, fucking, it, and I'm learning this. This is, I know that we, we don't have fucking comparable situations, but I really do believe that you will be rewarded for being yourself because what happened is if you, what am I trying to say? How hard have you been going at like, putting your music out on the internet and like streaming on like our pan or TikTok or anything like that. Barely any at all, because I've always been afraid to do any of that stuff. But I, th- I think, and, and look, you know, it's easier you, in like, front of people. Cause you can see them. You can see the reactions. You can deal with the reactions in person on streams on, on the internet. This place is wild, man. It's a wild, wild west out here. But dude, there are, there are, Sort of like how I was saying, like in and in these like subreddits, there are other like trans artists out there. There are like fucking trans people Everything. all over the place that would love that would like if you came out and you had like your story and you went on TikTok and you if you went on TikTok and you made a TikTok video about like I'm an artist, here's my story. I tried. To, you literally just told the story that you have told us. I people would connect with that story and they would want to follow you and they would want to listen to your music. I'm not going to say that that's going to like – that like overnight you're going to be able to like make money off of like music streaming. But that could be the start of, you know, f- 
taking ownership over your identity and not just taking ownership of your identity, but you'll start to start to be like, oh, I'm actually like being rewarded for being myself. People are like, people would DM you and be like, hey, I'm really fucking glad that you're doing this because I was scared to do this. And the way that you're being, you know, open about who you are is inspiring me. And then you'll be like, oh, fuck, I'm actually getting every, my whole, I, I've been, I've been consistently my whole life punished for being who I am, but we're in a fucking media landscape right now where I genuinely think you will be rewarded for being who you are. Does that make sense? Am I talking crazy? No, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It's just, I guess, on my end of the thing, where I, first time I did that, or I came out, it was amazing. Like, I got all those messages from so many people, and it was so much support, and then I ended up homeless and living out of my car, and it's kind of hard to find a place to go and shave and do all that stuff that you need to do to not look like the other when you're when you're home, living out of your car every day. And I was actually on the process of starting hormones, and I was supposed to go a whole year every day as my you know as myself. And I made it seven months until I just you know I was homeless and I couldn't couldn't do it anymore. And so when that happened, I was like, "Fuck, sorry." Um, I don't know if we can curse, but um. I was like, you know, this sucks because now I got to go back into hiding per se. And at that point, I was like, okay, let me figure out everything, get everything back on course again. Then I came out again. And I was thinking this is going to be the time. It's going to be the one. It's going to be it. Made it like a year, and a, about a year, and then ended up in really dire straits again and had to take a step back. And then finally, after the second time, I, I ended up making music a, a full-time career, and I was like, I, I don't ever want to lose this. But then I moved away to where I am now in hopes of doing exactly what, what we're talking about, and it did not go well. <laughs> Let's just say it did not go well. So then after that, I kind of took some time off. I kind of laid my head low, and came back out and I came out swinging because I had something to prove and really built myself up in the, in the city and the surrounding area that I'm in. And now that, you know, I've kind of gotten that point and then COVID took all that away. I'm sitting here going, maybe I should just, you know, start thinking about what's next. But I'm scared to do it. I, I, again, I'm not, I'm not a therapist. I'm not like an advice guy. I don't want to, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I, if 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 you know we were just friends and I was telling you what I think you should do, I really I feel like you gotta get the fuck out of there. I feel like you know. I appreciate that. I, it, it, I just feel I feel like you gotta. I, I don't I don't feel like you can stay there. I feel like because just because if you move, even if you move and you're like fucking homeless for however long, I I, I, I again, man, I I don't want to like. It's fighting for a future. I, I kind of get what you you're know, saying. You know, I, I, I feel like you got to take the bet. You know, I feel like you got to take the chance. You just got to move and you got to get out of there. Because what, what, because at least, <clears throat> I don't know if what I'm saying is making any sense, but at least like, because what are you going to do? You're just going to stay in the closet and be in pain forever? Or at least until something works out until something happens in this long story. Okay. Long story short, I'm in the craziest state in America. If that tells you enough. And also, I hate that. Like you, you like, what the fuck? You can't do your job. If you're trans, that sound. Well, no, it's just cause there's a lot good. of, I, you gotta, I feel like you gotta get out of there. The, the mindset out here is not like, I, I even moved to a city that is known for being very, LGBT friendly and I realized it's not <laughs> when you get outside of just like this one street that they dedicated down the whole city it's like there's nothing else and everyone else gets like really put off by it but that's another thing that's that you, a lot of people don't know that there's there's a lot of infighting in the in the LGBT community there's a lot of gay and lesbian people that don't like trans people really yeah and a lot of gay and lesbian people don't like bi people and, it's, there's infighting all and all the time in all types of places.
And what's funny is I'm going to say it. Somebody, uh, I think, no, I'm not going to say it because it's just too spot on. What? Okay, let me ask you a crazy question. Yeah. If you If you could live anywhere in the entire world, where would you live? In the entire world. Well, that's the thing. I hate the cold. Okay. It's a burning passion. Okay. But a lot of the places I would like to live are cold. I mean, like New York City, but just I want to go somewhere where there's just people playing music all the time. And that's all that happens all, every day, every second, every minute. Could you go to there's Nashville? Music being played. Oh, I love Nashville. That's a good spot. Is Nashville... LGBT friendly? Not as no much, idea. but I'm not like, I mean, I'm, I'm born and raised in the backwoods, you know, on the creeks, all that stuff. So it, it, at the same time, I'm not like, you know, the most quote unquote flamboyant person. I'm, I'm still raised in the backwoods. I know how to handle myself. But it's just I need to be somewhere that's not so like society is, is shutting it all down. I again, I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm, I'm privileged and shit, so I, I don't want to like. I, I, this has come from like a place of like I want to have hope for you because I, I see it. Like I, I feel like there is an opening, and you should try to find it for you to move to another place where you, because you don't have to move. You don't have to. You don't have to move to like an a. You don't have to move to like the a s to tier most expensive fucking San Francisco city to just find a place where you can be trans without people shitting on you. True. It's just I guess it wouldn't be so hard if it wasn't for my my uh, for for my career, you know, for my uh, my career field. Because it's just that, that's a, that's the kind of field where you are put in front of people, and they either like you or they don't, and it's, and your job is based upon their judgment of you. And if you have would something you like that opposed, that can make people not be happy about it, <laughs> but would you be opposed to like working a, a job outside of your field for a little bit? I've I've worked a lot of jobs outside my field. Like I've I've worked like sixty something jobs already. And I really don't want to go back. I miss flying like five, six nights a week, sometimes two or three gigs for like all all day long, 12 hours of just playing music. That would be the best, but it sucks. It sucks yeah, that it's all just gone. Here, 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 here's, here's what I think you should do. I think you should find, like literally go, go on fucking, pick like your top five cities. That you would want to live in. Go to Facebook. Type what, what kind of music do you say you play? I mean, blues, blues and funk and jazz. Literally, type, go into Facebook. Type Brooklyn jazz and find the Facebook group and make a make a post in the Facebook group, I, ex, telling your entire story. And people, I guarantee, people will reach out to you, and they will have like actual actionable advice like i i i know that is like a lame answer but like i i I think that you should i think that you should you should you should try to connect with people because there's there is i fucking get like there's gotta be there's gotta be there has to be someone who has been in your exact situation who you could feasibly get in touch with that might be able to help you in some way well, there's one person like, like I've been like wanting to reach out to. Like you have the internet. Like you – say that again? There is one person I've been wanting to reach out to, and it, and it worked before where I got to, long story short, feature on stage with like a billboard-topping band because I just reached out to him. and was like, you're an influencer. Fucking keep doing that. Fucking keep – keep, well, keep, keep reaching out to it people. It wasn't with that. Keep... There was, there's this one chick. Her name – she's from this band called Against Me, but she did exactly what I'm kind of doing right now. And they were kind of famous, and the, they were super famous, or, or pretty, pretty famous in the '90s as a punk band. And she stayed as he throughout all of that. And they asked, "Why did it take you so long to come out about this?" And they were like, "I wanted to wait until I had more than enough fans where I could lose 50% of them and still be 
you know, just fine. Why, though? It's complicated. That's what makes it so complicated because, you know, you're you're putting, a, a like, a, a funnel on your potential, I feel like, in today's world because so many people, you know, not everybody, obviously, but there's a lot of people left in this world that look at someone like me and go, freak, crazy, lunatic, weirdo. But I think, and this, this to me, this is like, to me, this isn't even like a social thing anymore. This is like a marketing thing. Like, if you like, seriously, like, if you look at it like that, like you, you're, you're in a niche, uh, in a way. Yeah. I went to school for music business and all that stuff, and I, I mean, that's another factor niche, right there. You gotta, you gotta I, do your your brand. Exactly, but that's good. I think it's good to be in a niche because that means the people who love you and connect with you and identify with you will really love you and connect you and identify with you and will really be inclined to support you more than just a general person, someone who is involved in your niche. So I think that's well, a good I thing. I don't think you, you should look at it as a bad thing. I want to tell you that 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 was what you just said right there is pretty much the perfect thing I needed to hear throughout this call. Like that's why I think I called was to hear that. Okay, good, good. Because I, I, I really fucking fully believe that especially – fuck I – this is like some fucking Gary Vaynerchuk bullshit, but like, I seriously like. It used to be. See, I've, if you know what, if this were like a nineteen, I if this were like nineteen eighty one, you'd be fucked. Yeah. But it's not. If this we'll were nineteen eighty one, you you you'd have to like. So you 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 couldn't do this, but you're but it's not. It's twenty twenty, and there's TikTok, and there's Arpan, and there's fucking Twitter, and there's SoundCloud. All right, you know what I'm saying? Like, so the the the. You, you, the tools are there for you to find your audience and to find your niche. And, and I, I, and everything that you look at as a bad, I swear to God, everything that you look at is a bad thing. Everything that people call you a freak for, everything that people bully you for, everything that people give you shit for will, will, this sounds cliche, but I genuinely believe it. And all those things will actually be the things that give you the most benefit and the most value to the people who identify with you, who are going to be your fans, who are going to buy your t-shirts, who are going to stream your music. Who are gonna sign up for your Patreon? Who are gonna, you know, do all those things? Well, I just, I, I don't know. I just never thought about it that way. Never thought about, you know, the people that will that do come, even though they might not be, you know, it might be a, a harder road, but the people there will be more genuinely there. Exactly. Yeah. That's why would you want those fans in the first place? The the fifty percent that would leave if you came out. Well, it sounds like I gotta make some plans. Make some plans, Riley. And look, I was someone in in the um someone in the uh, uh, chat was saying this. Um, I don't know if you're on our Discord, but, but I do. Uh, we have a little self promote channel. Definitely put your stuff in there. Okay. Um. And we'll, sure. we'll, we'll check it out. Well then, um, me. How do I uh, how do I join it? Is it in the info below? Someone yep, type I, someone type exclamation point Discord for us. Already in it. Already done. Rock and roll, baby. Yeah, put, well, put, I put really your stuff in there. It. We'll check it out. Of course, man. And Thank you for be, the talk. be safe. Don't uh Oh, I, oh well. You know. Oh no. Oh no. No, right. Too much too much going on, too much left to do. All right, man. Take care and and, and, and good luck to you. Thank you and uh thanks for doing what you do. Chat, y'all be easy. Thank you very much. All right, man. Take care. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Call from Zach. Two. Zach. Zach. Gek. Finally. Have we never spoken before? Is this the first time that we have ever spoken? This is the first time we're speaking, Gek. So you tell me so that this is, mo- this is you tell me that this is momentous. I don't know how many times I've called. It feels like I've been on the phone for a year. Do you feel like it almost feels like we know each other a little bit? Yeah, no, I feel like I know you pretty well. I mean, I don't know if you feel like you know me, but I hope you do. I don't necessarily feel like I know you, but I mean. You know, I don't mind. I we can. I think we can feel comfortable in each other's presence. I wouldn't say I have like tangible information about you, necessarily. Yeah. 
but I think that we that we could you know be and have a conversation with each other. That's very fair. Uh, to be honest, there there's a really really good reason that I called, um, and I feel like you're the only person that can that can help me with this. So that's yeah, I'm I'm really excited for this. Why? Before you tell me what it is, wh- mm-hmm. I I want to know why you think I'm the only person that can help you. To be honest, it's something that's been weighing on my mind for years and years, and I, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, what what it means, what it could mean, what the answer is to this. And I think I just came across you probably like two weeks ago or so. Uh, I think it's been TikTok, and. Uh, I've been following you since, and you just you you have this sense of knowledge that you put off in in areas that I, I've never felt from anyone else, and I feel like you might be able to give me some insight on this particular topic. I don't know; it's just a feeling, I guess. Okay, we can try, but I have said, but I'm not qualified to do anything in any shape or form. But you know what? Zach, you know what? Tonight's a special night. I'm willing. Let's give it a shot. Tell me what's okay. going on. So, this is something that I, I thought about years ago, and uh, like I said, I've, I've never really been able to get closure on it by myself. But I just, I really need to know, and I hope you can give me, you know, some some guidance on it. So, here it is. Do this is hard. Do do dogs know their dogs? Absolutely not. Okay. I Good have question. a dog. I have a dog, Zach. And he doesn't know? She has no fucking clue. Okay. Okay. How do you know that she Dear. doesn't know, though? Because she knows very few things. Yeah. She, but I feel like I think know she a lot knows that food know. is delicious. Yeah. She knows. She knows. I mean, look, she knows things that humans, that, that, that animals instinctually know. Yeah. Not with their brains, but with, you know, their, I'm not, again, this is why I don't know anything about anything, but like, she knows, she doesn't know what a dog is. Okay. She instinctually knows what food is. She instinctually responds to affection and, and the release of oxytocin, as we all do. Yeah. You know, when she's being pet, it releases feel-good chemicals in her brain, so she knows she likes being petted. But she doesn't know these things because, like, adult, like everything that she knows is because of, chemi- is because of chemicals being released in her brain, not because of knowledge. From like a database or anything. Yeah. No one's ever told if, her she's a dog. So exactly. No one's that. ever told her she's a dog. If she can't feel it, she does not know it. Yeah. If she can't feel it with shoes, she can't feel dog with her body. But sometimes my dog follows me out to my car and he, he, he goes to the back door. He doesn't ever try to drive. So I feel like he knows I, I'm a dog. I cannot drive this car. I got to get in the back. That's just how it is. You know. He doesn't know what driving a car is. He had, that that idea is not that is foreign to him. Yeah. But he know he he has to know that it's it's a mode of transportation, unlike walking on his four legs. And he has to know that he's not capable of making that possible. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, I'm I don't, not claiming I think to, you're giving to have him more too much credit. Don't I don't think he thinks that much about this. I don't think he's thinking that. I don't think he's thinking as hard about it as you think he is. I want to think that he's so smart. I know I want you to want to. It. And by the way, look, I'm I'm not going to be the kid telling you that Santa Claus isn't real, even though he's yeah, not. Yeah, no. I, but I pre- yeah, well, but yeah, you're probably right. Hmm. The dogs well, don't know anything. You know what's yeah. okay? Like. Hey, you want you want to hear something interesting that I read somewhere? I would absolutely love to hear something interesting. This fucking this actually kind of freaked me out a little bit, but like, I read I read this article that was talking about how consciousness isn't a binary of conscious and unconscious; it's actually a spectrum. 
There's more conscious to let. There's more conscious and there's less conscious. And humans, this is I think is really fucking interesting. Humans have not won the binary of consciousness and unconscious by being conscious. They're simply more conscious than other things, which means there's something more conscious than us. Yeah, that makes sense. So like a ant doesn't understand the world of a chicken. Yeah. A chicken doesn't understand the world of a dog. A do- imagine how li- like like imagine how little a dog understands the human world. There is another organism above us that we understand as much that we can only understand as much as a dog could understand us. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you think that that type of organism is here with us? No, I don't think it cares about us. Yeah. But well, I mean, dogs. I know I'm a human. Dogs follow us around. That like, do you think it's possible that we could follow that around and not even realize that it possesses this ability over us? Dogs follow us around because we do things to them that release feel-good chemicals in their brain. Yeah. Such as pet them and give them food. Because that's the only thing they know is those chemicals in their brain. And uh, by the way, I think that means that your uh, – by the way, I, don't, I wouldn't say that doesn't mean your dog love, does love you. I think your dog actually does love you. But yeah. I also think – I mean this is some fucking Pickle Rick shit right here. But yeah. love is, you know, just a chemical. Yeah, no, for sure. I agree. Hmm. Wow. So your dog does love you, but love is is just a chemical that compels humans to breed. That's a quote yeah. from Rick and Morty, but uh, it's kind of true. Yeah. And I'm and I'm, you know, I'm pickle Rick. Yeah. Well, you know, you gotta rip that bandaid off sometime. It's a hard reality to, to face, but a necessary one. How are you doing, Zach? I'm I'm doing good, you know. Um I'm sitting here next to my girlfriend, um, uh, where we were watching a hockey game. She's she's passed out, she's pregnant, so she she falls asleep pretty easy. Do you but, love uh, your girlfriend? I do, yeah. I, I love her more than anything outside of our son growing inside of her stomach. Yeah pretty cool it's pretty cool but that's you know what is love well you know a cartoon once said that love is just a chemical that compels humans to breed oh she just woke up she says hi hello man this is awesome i'm so you know i i called so many times i thought that my service provider was going to cancel my service but here we are we did it, Zach. And we I, did it. And you know what? Thank you. Thank you for being persistent enough to get here. You know, I, I couldn't have done it without you. There were, there were multiple times where I was like, you know, it's not going to happen. And I'd, I'd end the call. You know, I wouldn't redial. And I'd go back to the stream. And then somebody else would say, you know, I've called this many times and I can't get through. And you're like, don't give up. And I was like, yeah, yeah, don't give up. You got this. And ladies and gentlemen, this is this right here is a success story. This is a breakthrough. Yeah. You know what I need? You know what I'm going to start doing and I got to figure out how to do. This? I need a breakthrough button. Like when mm. we have a breakthrough. Like the staples that was easy button or like something bigger something like, like that. Just, you know, like a button. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can't make one, but if you had one, that would be cool. I wish I could contribute. We'll figure something out. Yeah. All right, Zach. Well, I'll give someone else a chance. I appreciate your time. It's it's been great. You really gave me some insight on something I've been, you know, a demon I've been, you know, struggling with for the past who knows how long. I'm I'm happy to help Years. out, and you know, I hope this doesn't change your relationship with your dog. Oh, it doesn't. No, I know. I I love him very much, and I hope that he loves me. And if he doesn't, then you know, it's fine. He just he gets fed and he's cool with it, whatever. But. You know, it's very mature. Is what it is. Say. Yeah. Well, you can't change the way that people or dogs feel. You know, you can only adjust accordingly. 
I'll drink to that. Have a good evening, Zach. I love you. Thanks. I love you, Gek. Call from Eli. Hello, Eli. Hey. How are you doing, Gex? Uh, you know, I'm all right. And thank you for asking because not a lot. Look, Eli, can I level with you here? Yeah. Not of a lot course. of people ask me. Not a lot of people ask me how I am, which is fine. I don't mind that people don't ask me how I am that often either because. They're not obligated to. I'm not. I, I didn't set up the stream so that people could ask me how I am. That would be ridiculous. Of course, but I appreciate but what they do. So thank you for that. that response. Of course, exactly. I mean, it's always nice, but I'm not. I'm not actively seeking it. I'm not actively. Have you ever lied, Eli? No, actually, we'll get into that. What are you doing right now? What am I doing? Well, right now I've been having a few booze and watching the stream. That's cool. What um. What do you what do you usually do all day? What do I usually do all day? Well, see, I'm a diesel technician, so usually I'm working on heavy equipment or semi trucks. So you work on trucks all day? Yep, semis all day. Always like a threat of being crushed. I love doing it. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. So that's kind of that's scary. You're like constantly under. You're a constant threat of a gigantic machine crushing your skull. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thrill. There's nothing oh, better than God. that thrill. Real? Are you serious right now? It, you know, it, yeah. it, it, that's weird. Because if, if you just if you had just told me that you enjoy the the mechanics of fixing cars. I wouldn't think that was crazily fucked up. But the fact that you're telling me that you enjoy the danger of potentially getting your head crushed by being underneath a car. That's the excitement. I almost don't believe you. No, that's the real excitement. Are you being you know, hard? Are you as safe as possible? You could be as safe as possibly can. But you never know if that thing's going to crush you. So you'll always have to keep that like ready thought of fight or flight. Are you being serious right now? I'm being dead serious. I can't. That makes no. I'm not. I am not doing this to a. Okay, I look. I know this is a funny situation, and this is a funny call. But I'm not doing this to exact. That makes no sense whatsoever. And I almost. I still. I don't believe you. It's the thrill. So I've. I've always been a thrill seeker. I've always been on dirt bikes. Always. Always been looking for that excitement, that fight or flight. But so, that's dirt, dirt bikes and like skydiving. There's a that's thrill so to different. It. I know, but I couldn't find my way into that profession. I ended up usually getting hurt. That's like saying that, like you get that to me. That's like saying that you get a thrill out of like holding a knife up to your throat, but not. Slicing your throat. No, I wouldn't take it that far, but I do like that fight or flight simulation. However, I do know that the real question of this stream was about the lie. No, there's n wait. So are you sorry, are you tell me would you would you prefer to work in an environment that had would you get off on working in an environment that had po that had less safety restrictions? No, not necessarily because I also highly look after safety, but sometimes the, even when safety is at the highest precaution and shit's been looked at, you never know if something's going to go wrong for no reason. There's always that slight chance. Why does that appeal to you? When you're fixing know. cars, but you're just that makes no sense when you're fixing cars. I also I guess love I get the it mechanics if you're like behind it and engineering. Or... I also love mechanics and engineering very much. I also love taking things apart. But I've also been a thrill seeker myself and sometimes I know that that thought's in the back of my head. 
when the truck's stable, I know there's nothing to be worried about. But when, like, you are doing something that's heavy equipment, you know, and you have to strap a crane to it and pull it out and everything's working perfectly fine, but something accidentally slips for no reason there's always that danger behind those kinds of jobs and it's kind of crazy to watch and try to like figure out what you could do better next time if it did happen nothing could happen no one could get hurt because of the safety precautions that were in place but there's always that thrill of being like whoa that shit was crazy all right real quick can i ask you something what have you ever lied? Boy, yes. And I've only told a handful of people this lie. And it would be amazing to have it out in public. Hit me. So, a few years back, I got heavily under the influence of alcohol, way too wasted for my own good, at my girlfriend's mom's house while watching her dog. Well, I ended up shitting on her mom's floor and then blaming the dog later when I found out that I shit on the floor and got away with it. And to this day, she doesn't know? No. And happily, it's an ex now. But yes, she did not know. I ended up picking up my own shit, but she never knew it was probably me. You ended up picking it up? Yep. Why did you end up picking it up? I ended up picking it up with paper towel and stuff and flushing it, but... should apologize to the dog, man. Uh, oh, dude. That dog was amazing, too. I love that dog. I, I felt so bad. Do you think the dog was pissed at you? Probably. I, he looked real upset when I looked over at him. He looked at me and just kind of looked down and went away. I felt real bad. What do you think you could do to make it up to the dog? If I were to ever meet that dog again, I would give it the biggest milk bone I've ever seen, plus a giant cow leg, cow bone. Would that be enough? It might be. I'd probably have to give him a lot of walks, too. What'd you say your name was? My name was Eli, man. Eli? Thanks, yep. for, thanks for being honest with us about your lie, and I hope it made you feel better to come clean about that. It really did, man. Thank you for letting me bring that up. Absolutely. You yeah. have a great night, man. You too, man. I love you, Eli. I'll talk to you soon. I love you too, Gex. Should I should I drink some water? I don't want to drink any. I don't want to drink water anymore. I'm tired. It. I'm, I'm, you know how people say they're trying to quit carbs. They're trying to quit sugar. I'm trying to quit water. I read a blog saying that too much water is bad for you. It makes you gain weight. It makes you fat. Water makes you fat. I'm 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 doing a water fast. I'm doing a water fast, but I'm doing uh, the opposite of a water. Most people when they do water fast, they only drink water. I'm doing. I'm eating everything and drinking everything besides water. Call from Ethan Pelletier. Ethan Pelletier. Hello, I'm in. <laughs> Hi, you're in. Yes. Hello, I'm in. Oh, do me a favor. Are you watching the stream? I got you. Are you watching the stream? Are you watching the stream, Ethan Pelletier? Uh, I just shut it off. Okay, you just shut it off. Where are you? What room of your house are you in right now if you live in a house? I live... Oh, I'm in my living room. I just left 
my bedroom. Where can you where I don't where can you go where you're even more isolated than your living room? Do you have a cellar of some kind? Uh hold on one second. I do have a cellar, but uh you should be, are you able to hear me better now? Are you in the cellar? Uh, no, I switched out of speakerphone. I want the most isolated version of you. I don't want you to feel, I don't want you in your living room where you're like, oh no, my roommate's going to come in and hear me talking to Gecko Man. I want, you know. Oh, you know I, I live in a house by sense? myself. Perfect. I, I live in a house by myself, so. Uh... <laughs> what did you do all day? I worked uh, from, let's say, nine to five. I'm an accountant, and uh, I came home. I'm just kind of relaxed. Uh, I kind of got a. I actually had a re reduction in my own anxiety because uh, I've been taking a, an auditing course, and I found out that I got an A on a paper that I thought I bombed. So <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't know how I did that, but hey, I'll take it. You were taking an auditing course. Yeah, I just uh, it's an eight week course, and it's so I can get into. Uh, graduate school what is auditing auditing is basically just trying to make sure that uh okay so trying to find the right way to put it all right in accounting uh accountants mostly what they do is just record transactions so let's say uh <clears throat> you own a company and uh you need to purchase some materials for some reason an accountant records that transaction. They record any transaction that has to do with money, and then they make balance sheets and reports based on the uh, money that is spent and take it Where do you think we go when we die, Ethan? Uh, I do not know yet. Well, of course you don't know. <laughs> uh, where I, do you think? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, have to think, I, I have to admit, that kind of comes in my head every so often. And yeah. I'd like to so think So you think about this often? Yeah, it's something that comes in my head because I got a little bit of a fear of death, so I kind of would like to make... I prefer the idea of there being something just because I don't like the idea of going out and being nothing. You know what Why I mean? are you afraid of death? Uh, I, I just... It's something that I've carried since I was a kid, and uh, it's just the idea... I just don't like the idea of ceasing to exist as myself. Or that even that remote possibility of that, because uh, as as someone who's agnostic, I'm not certain, but I just I genuinely don't like the idea of you know poof. So when you say that, what do you when you say exist as yourself? Does that mean that like if let's say you found out that you could be reincarnated as like something yeah, I wouldn't else. like that. You wouldn't like that. I, you wouldn't even if it was you. You get to keep on living, but you can't live as Ethan Pelletier. I, I want to keep my identity and my person. I feel like I, I just really like being me. And I don't really ever want to lose that. Do you like your life? Yeah. For the most part, yes. Um, I mean, to get where I've been, I've definitely been through a lot of crap. Uh, I lost my mom three years ago to leukemia. And that's kind of how I got the house. I inherited it from her. And I had to deal with some guilt for, over that because I felt guilty that I profited over her death. But I came sure, to a point sure. where I realized that, um, you know, I remember my mother. And I remember, like, the good and the bad. And I do care about her. And if something, if she were alive, she'd be proud of where I am today. And she'd be happy that I have the house. She'd be happy that I still have the house because when she died, I didn't have a job. So <laughs> it was a very uncertain time period where I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to keep the house or not. But I fortunately found a good accounting job and, well, I managed to save my house. <clears throat> no, I agree with you, man. I, I can understand where those feelings of like, guilt would come but like I, I dude what you said like full on like she would want you to have that house she would want you to have a good life yeah and she'd be proud of me for where i am today and it wasn't like i killed her or anything like that so 
it's not like I was wishing for her death or doing no anything one, to actively. Uh, no one. What's up? No one thought that. No, I know. Uh, I'm just saying it's not like I was doing those things, so I shouldn't feel any guilt towards that. You know what I mean? Like if, no, <laughs> obviously, if I were, I'd be a bad person anyway, so I wouldn't even feel guilt in that situation. But you know, I. I guess yeah, that I'm makes just, sense too. Yeah. That you, if you had done it, if you had killed your mom, you wouldn't feel guilty about it because the type of person that would do that is probably antisocial enough that they wouldn't they would do it and not feel guilty about it. Yes, yes, definitely. So I, I have to admit, uh, you know, I do really like having my own house, but and that's part of where some of that guilt was coming from. But, you know, again, it's, I mean, what can you do? You, you're, you're, you get the cards that you're dealt with and you play them as, you, as they come, you know? <clears throat> well, Ethan Pelletier, you know, I'm, I'm happy for you. You know, I'm not yep. going to lie. I was a little, when you were talking to me about auditing, I was a little bored. But Oh, I you, know. But, Accounting but, is but, very but, boring. <laughs> but, you're, but that's the thing is you're, so, you're aware of the you, I think that you're because I've, I've, you know, there's a stereotype about like accountants that they're like their parents made them be an accountant or whatever. But you seem this does seem like a path that you have chosen that you're happy with. I'm happy. I'm oh, happy I've about actually that. that's your arc. There can actually be some really funny stuff that happens in accounting, and I'll. So uh, we have this thief where I work, and then there's really incompetent people where I work. There's something that's common probably. <laughs> any profession and one of the one of these one this one dude uh <laughs> basically he finds out that somebody is stealing from his store so what he does is uh he decides to basically have her pay back what she stole which if the first time if it never happened again i guess you could say it worked but she kept stealing from the store over and over again and they kept trying to make her pay it back. And at one point, my coworker is just like, well, you just keep giving her interest-free loans. So, you know, it's just, you get stories like that doing it. But that's going to happen anywhere. I want to be honest with you again. <clears throat> I, that story I also found boring. But I, I find it, 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 makes me, <laughs> it makes me happy that you find it interesting. Yes, yeah. I should also Listen. admit that uh, this is actually the third time I've called. Like, yeah, and actually gotten on. Before? We've talked twice before. Uh, the first well, conversation look, I told about the roommate, the one that was going around the storms, you know, tapping. Oh, <laughs> yes. I remember you eating yeah. Pelletier. Well, I, I Pelletier, do have to admit. Look, oh. I hope that we have a fourth time and a fifth time and a sixth time until, until it's all over. And I love you very much, and I'll talk to you again soon. Yes, thank you. And I also wanted to say that, uh, I I feel like this is a good arc for me because when I first started talking to you, I felt really nervous. The second time, I was a little less nervous, but this time, I felt very comfortable. And uh, I, I thank you for that. <clears throat> good. I'm glad that you so. felt comfortable. I, you know, you got a good thing going, Ethan Pelletier. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and you do too because uh, honestly, this show, it's going to take off. It's already taking off. And fact is that, I mean, you're gonna, you're only going to go up from here. So well, when I'm making millions of dollars, I know who to call. Oh yeah, <laughs> you'll need a good accountant. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, talk to you later. Bye. Later. I love you, Ethan Pelletier. Hello. Hello? Hey, this is Aaron. This is Aaron? This is Aaron. You said this is a Dan or Aaron? A. A. Ron. Aaron. I, my best friend in um, elementary school was named Aaron. And he and oh, I got nice. into a fight because three of my friends broke into his house when we were 13. <laughs> and we raided his fridge. And we raided his fridge and he had a fucking, you know the book Call of the Wild, Aaron? Do you know yeah, that book? Yeah. He had a fucking copy of Call of the Wild in his fridge. <laughs> Just 
just keeping it cold in there for and then he reason? and then he came in he busted it back he came home and he looked at me and he was like what and he looked at us and he was like what are you guys doing and then i held up the copy of call of the wild and i was like what are you doing but he <laughs> was, was in the right i was in the wrong because like i was caught? in his house no he didn't guard. give a fuck i acted I, I was i was in way more trouble than he was there's nothing <laughs> illegal about putting a copy of call in the wild um in your fridge but exactly. breaking into someone's house sure. is a different story <laughs> That's funny. That's a good story. Aaron. How's it going, man? How you doing? You know, I'm all right. And by the way, you know, thanks for asking. Not a lot of people ask about me, which, you know, is fine. They're not obligated to, but it does feel nice when they do. Um, what are you doing right now, Aaron? I was just watching the stream all night. I've been loving it. It's, it's great. Thank you. I, is this your first time? It's a unique format, you know, just talking to one another. <laughs> Is, is this your first time watching it? Yeah, yeah, it's the first time. I, like some other callers here, I I just saw you on Reddit. I thought it was great. Hell yeah! I oh, thank you, man. I'm I'm happy. Uh, happy you're part of the niche. You know, yeah, Reddit. Sure. What else do you do on Reddit? What are your most frequented subs? Oh man, I'm I'm actually really new to it all. To be honest, I'm I'm like a revert, or maybe you know, I'm like a the Benjamin Button of internet people. I've I've been off internet and social media and stuff for a really long time but just starting to get back into it but trying to use it responsibly i guess i love psychology and stuff so i know there's a lot of <laughs> issues with stuff online i try to stay away from well well i said i would make this a quickie i'm trying to think of some good <sighs> oh yeah yeah that's right i'm trying I to forgot. think of some good but I, i'm trying to think of some good questions i can get for you yeah just give or me I a guess, short zinger yeah yeah aaron what's your favorite color <laughs> you know what funny enough i love green emerald green is probably my favorite why i don't know why it's it's just really pretty actually most of my i have a room in my house that's just painted green not like a, a bright you know uh awesome gecko green but but a nice, tame, earthy green. What are your five favorite green things? Oh, man. Okay, first on top of my head is Kermit, because he's a classic. Um, Oscar the Grouch, also a classic. I don't know why I'm just going with puppets. That's odd. Fair enough. <laughs> um, do you say green things, just in general? Yeah, green things, or I guess green okay. characters. Uh, yeah, pickles. Somebody in chat said green apples. I do really love Granny Smith apples. It's great. Um, okay, so we got pickles, many... apples, Oscar the Grouch, and Kermit. Yeah, okay, so one more. One more. I'm just going to go with trees. I love trees. They're pretty. All shapes and colors. I love nature. Beautiful. Right? That's some good. I thought that was solid. I thought that was solid, too. I think you did a good job with that. You got. We got... There was a good mix of there was a good variety of characters. We got some foods in there, and then we got nature. Yeah, I started with a couple of puppets, then I brought it back around to to being normal. I think by the end there. Well, Aaron, I think um, that was, this was successful. This was if look if I had to, you know. You did a good job at Nate. I didn't think it was possible to do an actively, not that someone would do a bad, I didn't think it was possible to do an actively bad job either. But I didn't yeah. think it was possible to do an actively good job at naming five green things. But I think you did it. Okay. I think you were well, good. I felt a little on the spot. I felt pressure, but that's, that's good. I'm glad. I, I couldn't tell. I think that you, I think you handled <laughs> that pressure perfectly. Oh, perfect. Thanks. I, I want, I got to come off smooth. Well, Aaron, um, Thank you for coming in and, and sharing your knowledge of green things with us. And uh, I'm glad to have you on the stream for the first time. I hope that I hope you stick around. And um, Yeah, hey, it was my absolute like pleasure. It. Yeah, thanks awesome, for talking man. to me. For sure, dude. I, uh, I love you very much, and I hope to see you soon. And uh, have a good rest of the night, man. You too, man. I appreciate it. Take care. Take care. All right, bye.